Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim's a game renowned for its thrilling world and incredible environmental storytelling. It seems almost every building and dungeon in the world of Elder Scrolls V has a brilliant narrative behind it. Alas, not all of these narratives are for the faint of heart, though. Many of the places we can visit in Skyrim were tailor-made to unnerve players and give us the creeps. Though in a world of malicious gods, nefarious necromancers, and disgusting monsters, I suppose we should have expected as such. Anyway, you've read the title and I'm fresh out of words to add to this introduction. Just sit back and relax as we gear up to explore five more of the creepiest locations in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, we have Tovald's Cave, a massive cavern in the rift that lies right on the edge of the Velothi Mountains, which defines Skyrim's eastern border with Morrowind. Now, when I call Tovald's Cave massive, I really do mean it. It's more or less three large subterranean dungeons, all linked up together with their own separate loading screens. The place is huge. It's mostly inhabited by a clan of Fulmer and their insect pets. Which makes the place frightening enough as is, if you ask me. But it's the various journals and notes left behind by a number of unfortunate souls that really give this place its tremendously uneasy vibe. You see, running just underneath the Velothi Mountains, long ago this cavern once connected Skyrim with Morrowind, and it provided an alternative to crossing over the massive mountain range for people who needed to get in between the provinces. Though, it seems it was only used by the most daring and experienced of adventurers. When the Red Mountain, Morwin's largest volcano erupted in the year 5 of the Fourth Era, around 196 years prior to the events of Skyrim, things suddenly changed, however. Thousands upon thousands of Dark Elves were forced to flee from their homelands to escape the clouds of ash and accompanying collapse of society. And a large group of around two dozen of the most desperate of them decided to take their chances and descend into this cave, hoping they would make it to Skyrim. We can find the ancient, faded journals of this group and their skeletons throughout the dungeons. So, you can probably guess how their endeavor all panned out. Shortly after entering, the tunnel they came in through collapsed behind them. Meaning, turning back simply wasn't an option. This is also why we can't use the cave to get to Morrowind. Initially, their journey seemed to be going... okay. Many of the Dunmer were still jockeying with the trauma of losing everything to the volcano, and it seems much of the group was already in a poor mental state to begin with. But slowly as they advanced further and further, members of the group started seeing things. Some claimed they were being stalked by white elves. And slowly, one by one, people started to go missing. Suffice to say, eventually every member of this group would either be slaughtered or captured by the Fulmer that dwelled in this cavern's depths. We can find many of their skeletons and faded writings that document their terrifying fate. Ultimately, it seems not one of them would ever see the sunlight again. Thankfully, 200 years later, we do have a chance to ensure that their killers are finally purged once and for all. Next on our list, while we're still in the rift, I feel like we absolutely must stop by the Fortress of Faldar's Tooth. At first glance, this area may not come across as especially unnerving. Initial impressions might lead you to believe it's just like any other bandit-occupied stone stronghold. However, nosy players can reveal that it's the site of some very odd happenings. You might notice that this location has a rather pronounced and peculiar presence of wolves and dogs. The courtyard is just a giant wolf pen. As we enter, we find wolf cages with wolves inside. And there's even a fighting pit, where bandits seem to be spectating a battle between two four-legged canines in a little coliseum. It would seem that Faldar's Tooth is the center of an underground dogfighting operation. The bandits here must capture canines from across the region, and raise or train them to battle it out in their little ring. Perhaps they're turning a lucrative profit on this operation. Maybe they're attracting business from outlaws across Skyrim. Whatever their motivation, it seems this gang's obsession with animal fighting might be influencing their lives in more ways than they know. Let me explain. Towards the back of the fort is a small kitchen, where we can find a book titled 
Cook's Journal, clearly written by the resident chef, and its contents are a bit, well, concerning. It reads, quote, Meat, 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 meat. That's all they ever want. I made them some nice grilled leeks and they threw them in my face. I told them that if they'd bring me some fish or venison, I'd cook it up. But all they ever do is waste their wages at the ring. But maybe there is a way I can get them some meat. End quote. What could this cook be referring to? Oh dear, yes, there is an entire shelf absolutely filled with nothing but raw dog meat. The chef here appears to be feeding the unknowing men the remains of their own pups. Additionally, in the fort's basement, we can find the area the cook seems to have done most of the actual butchering, so the bandits themselves would never know. What's unclear is whether or not the chef is using the remains that wolves who have already perished in the ring, or is just straight up killing them themselves. I guess it matters not. At the end of the day, this location has quite the unsettling implications. But, hey, if we're scared, imagine how the pups must feel. Coming in at number three, the College of Winterhold is an institution viewed with great suspicion by much of Skyrim's more traditional Nord population. It's seen as a center of dark arts and malicious practices that must be hiding something. Already skeptical of the arcane arts to begin with, when the college was the only structure to survive Winterhold's famous Great Collapse, you better believe few suspect it's a coincidence. That said, the game makes a point of defying these allegations when we join the college. The faction is indeed presented as an organization with pure intentions, dedicated to simple studies, where the dark practices they're so often accused of are actually met with a strictly enforced ban. In short, we're taught while they may not always be perfect or especially competent, the mages of the College of Winterhold are good, honest people. However, players that take the time to pay a visit to The Midden, a series of dark tunnels and caves beneath the college, may begin to feel that perhaps all those weary Nords were onto something. You see, while the college itself may ban immoral magical practices and try to stop any forms of necromancy or work that could be considered unnatural, those rules never completely stopped anyone. And throughout the years, nefarious students and professors who wished to engage in the most despicable of arts would simply go here, beneath the college, away from prying eyes. The result is that when we visit the Midden, accessible through a couple of hatches spread across the campus, we find a horrifying place. A dungeon littered with what's been left behind from frightening rituals and clearly unsanctioned acts. Skeletons are posed in all sorts of freaky positions. There are mass graves, torture rooms, and a whole lot more. This is not an area for someone with a weak stomach. The Midden also serves as the home to the mysterious Atronach Forge, an ancient device that's rumored to transport items from oblivion itself to the mortal realm, that nobody really knows how it got here. At the climax of the college's questline, we'll have to head down here in order to meet with Argur of Dunlane, the trapped spirit of a Breton student who once attended the college long ago, but somehow infused his soul with unnatural energies around Winterhold and proceeded to become this Dr. Manhattan-esque spirit. It's weird. The spectral being gives us vital knowledge related to the Thalmor's plots, but beyond that doesn't do much, and I must say, he feels like a really wasted character, but I digress. The Midden is undeniably one of the creepiest and just all-around most uncanny environments I think we've ever seen in an Elder Scrolls game, and I wouldn't invite my worst enemy down here at night. For fourth spot, let's head on out to Frostflow Lighthouse, an abandoned lighthouse in the pale. No joke, in our last Creepy Locations video, around 10% of the comments were about this place. So, here we are. As we approach this location, we'll find the remains of a horse line outside, an eerie sign for what's to come. Upon entering, the Dragonborn will stand before quite the disturbing scene. The living quarters of this lighthouse is an absolute mess. 
Blood is splattered everywhere, furniture is tipped over, and the body of a Red Guard woman, impaled by a Falmer weapon, sits at the center of it all. Clearly, a mighty struggle took place. Beneath the primary living quarters, in the basement, two Charis Reapers can be found, as well as a tunnel leading to a Falmer overrun cave, where more human remains can be uncovered, mostly in pens. Some diaries and left-behind notes, both within the cavern and the lighthouse itself, communicate the terrible tale of what happened here. Evidently not long ago, a small family of Red Guards, a husband, wife, and pair of children, moved into this lighthouse. It was their dream, complete with everything they had ever wanted. And for the first few weeks, all was well. They would sometimes awake to an odd scratching coming from the basement, but it was always nothing. You can probably already guess where I'm going with this one. One day the husband, Habd, left the lighthouse for a trip all the way down in Riften to gather some supplies and whatnot. He would be gone about a week, but it was nothing unusual. However, this would be when things began to take a turn for the horrifying. Shortly after Habd left, Falmer managed to tunnel from one of their caves into the basement of the home itself and stormed it, quickly killing the mother and capturing the children, who they brought down into these cages. Habd did eventually return though, it's his passed away horse we find outside. And when he got home, he saw the same disturbing scene we did. He saw his wife lying dead on the floor, blood everywhere. He would go out a hero though. In his last act, he would pick up an axe and venture deep into the Fulmer Cave, in an effort to hopefully find his children. His actions, though, while very noble, were unfortunately mostly in vain. We can find a scribbled note left behind by one of Hab's daughters, that implies he was captured by the Fulmer and brought into the same pen she was. However, he was mysteriously taken away a couple days into his captivity. He did, however, manage to leave the girl a small dagger so she could take her own life before the Falmer did. And it seems that's what she chose to do. Habd himself would eventually be fed to a massive Charis Reaper that the Dovahkin can find towards the back of the cave. We can actually loot his skull from the creature's body once we've killed it. This whole narrative is as frightening as it is tragic. Communicated through environmental cues and diary entries, the story of this family is an unforgettable one. It doesn't all have to be for naught, though. In one of his journals, it stated that Habd had always wanted his remains to be burned in the lighthouse's fire. And if we make our way up to said fire, with his skull in our inventory, we'll actually be able to honor his wishes. Which gives this tale a bittersweet ending. And finally, last on our list, we're heading on over to East March to take a look at Crow Vanger Cave. And wow, does this place not deserve its spot in this video. The entrance to the cave itself makes it absolutely clear what's inside. It's covered in spider webs, spider eggs, and even what appears to be a mammoth that got itself trapped in a web. This, of course, is a frostbite spider den. As you enter and look around though, it will quickly become apparent that the spiders from here are particularly aggressive. There are no joke, dozens upon dozens of dead humans wrapped in webs inside of this location, as well as a couple more mammoths. It should go without saying that this place is an arachnophobe's worst nightmare, but that's not where it stops. You see, the cave itself is divided into two small sub-dungeons, separated by a loading screen. And in the second half of this cave, you might notice a button just sort of sitting on a wall for some reason. Press it, and a whole secret section of the dungeon will be opened up, full of vampires. As if the spiders weren't enough, somehow a clan of bloodsuckers has moved in here too, and they won't be very friendly to visitors. Once you've dispatched these undead, there should be about three to four vampires plus a thrall or two, you can look around their small dwelling, and find that it appears they too were very much enthusiastic about eating people. And they also appear to have engaged in a few unsavory necromantic rituals. Funnily enough, despite being what is, in my opinion, the most atmospheric spider dungeon, if that makes any sense, plus having that secret sub-dungeon of vampires, 
Provanger Cave isn't actually featured in any of the game's quests. There's the potential that it might be used in a Radiant Fetch quest that sends you to a random dungeon, but beyond that, the game itself never sends you here. It's never quite elaborated upon how the spiders here got to be so seemingly aggressive, or how a tribe of vampires subtly moved in. There's so many questions I think we have, yet so few answers the game provides. Nonetheless, this is a particularly spooky location that only some adventurous and somewhat nosy dragonborns will ever uncover. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Five more of the most unsettling and creepy locations in the world of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these thrilling environments and uncanny atmospheres spooked you the most, and which ones did I miss? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.